What is going on guys? It's King Nappy. We're here doing a quick review on the movie Bambi. Uh, me and my wife have been watching the Out of the Vault series on Disney Plus. And these are a lot of movies that I've never seen as a child. I never watched any of the classics. And so it's been fun kind of catching up and taking a look at things and looking at some of the older ones that I missed and, you know, kind of witnessing a little bit of the charm that some of them had and that some of them didn't. This movie was pretty good, but it was just god awfully slow. It was so slow. <sighs> so it started off Bambi. Young deer, he was born. His mother had him in the forest and all the animals in the forest gathered around uh, from far and near and they all came to go and see this young deer being born. Everybody referred to him as a young prince. So that caught my attention right off the bat. And I was wondering, you know, why they referred to him as this? You know, what's that all about? Is his dad, you know, is his dad some sort of king or prince or what's going on here? <laughs> Uh, he's born, he's kind of learning, you know, learning things about himself, learning how to walk, how to navigate. Uh, he ended up getting, uh, meeting two friends, Thumper and Flowers. Thumper is a, uh, like a young rabbit, part of this huge little litter of rabbits. Uh, it was weird though, because out of all the rabbits, he had the, like the red or brown eyes and the rest of them had blue eyes. So I guess he was the only one that had caught whatever recessive trait. I don't know. But I think the mom or the dad is the other one. One of them had like the same color eyes he had, but he was the only one out of them that had that color. So I thought that was a small detail that uh, was kind of kind of different. Um, Flowers is supposedly a male skunk, but just everything about everything about this character seemed female, especially when it was young. Um, just the voice, the mannerisms, um, the skunk name is, I forgot his actual name, but Bambi referred to him as flowers because I think it was in a bed of flowers playing around and something like that. Bambi referred to it as flowers and Thumper was just like that, you know, that's not his name or something like that, you know, and the the skunk was like, you know, I don't mind, you know, you can call me flowers, you know, call me whatever you want kind of thing. But it said it in a real like, you know, I don't know, kind of flirty kind of way. It was just off putting, bro. Like that just that was so weird seeing that and hearing that. And you know, it was just weird. Like he said that to him and he was just all smitten and just, you know, that was so weird. Story progressed, you know, Thumper and Bambi is hanging out a lot and learning how to walk, learning how to navigate, learning the land, and, you know, things like that. Later on in the story, there's this huge meeting. Uh, all these deer begin to gather all at this location. I think they were getting ready to meet about uh, possible uh, hunters getting ready to come into that particular area or that territory. At this meeting, Bambi and his mom went, and they ended up, you know, seeing the Great Prince, which is... Bambi's father uh the prince walked right past Bambi looked at him and I noticed like his ears had kind of turned like the hell. Bambi looked up at him and all that and then he just kept walking like this is whole your son I'm not sure how the you know how it goes in real life with deer and everything but jeez at least you know give him a handshake he ain't even say you know, give him one of these at least. Walk straight past that boy. Um, it was just weird, man. Like the dynamic that they had between him and his dad. Like he was always sort of spotty in the movie. He didn't really show up a whole lot. Uh, I think that was the only time that he had shown up. Besides a uh, a later scene, it was it was a few times. It was a few times. I'm mistaken. But at that meeting. Uh, the great prince had got kind of alert like something was up so he had ran he ran in a certain direction away from the dangers that was getting ready to come and as he ran the rest of the deer sort of followed him and they ran as well so Bambi had kind of got lost in the shuffle of everybody running 
And his mom had sort of lost track of him as well. So that was a scene where she was calling out to him like, Bambi, Bambi. And like the dude couldn't hear her. She couldn't hear him because he was calling out for her too. <laughs> mom, she, none of them could hear each other. So he's, he was still in the same area. He was still in the same area with all the deer running around. And somehow they both lose each other completely. Somehow the great prince and like a few other deer had saw Bambi and stopped and they, he ended up following them, following them on to safety. Um, I thought that was so weird though. Like that was so stupid. Like y'all were right there, you know? And even, even if you didn't see your mom, you see all the deer running, run with them. These are your people. Follow them. And they'd be like, Ugh. What the hell was we running for later? You know what I mean? It was just stupid. Uh, that was a part where I think Bambi and his mom went to this exact same place where this meeting was. It was the meadow, if I'm not mistaken. And they wanted to go out there for whatever reason. And so she tiptoed out there, told Bambi to stay back. She'll let him know when it's clear for him to come on out. She tiptoed out there. She said, it's all clear. He came out there with her. And then she got like a sudden sense of like, hey, something wrong. Like, this something ain't right. Let's get up out of here. And they ran. It, of course, there were some hunters in the area and they were shooting. They ran. They got a good ways ahead of everybody. But Bambi went ahead of her. And I think uh, one of the hunters ended up throwing off another shot. And wherever Bambi ran, he was looking for his mom. Of course, unfortunately, his mom did get shot. And yeah, it was sad. Um, his dad ended up meeting, uh, the prince, great prince ended up meeting up with him again and letting him know like, hey, your mom's not, not with us anymore. She's, she's no longer here. It was weird because Bambi like instantly just understood, put his head down and just like instantly understood. And I thought that was kind of, I thought that was different, um, but you know, whatever. So it shows them two walking off as if he's taking Bambi under his wing, which he's not. He is not. This dude is never around. So don't, don't think that he's under his wing. He probably left Bambi at the crib by himself all day. The scene progresses. And it shows old friend Owl. He's talking to Thumper. He's talking to Flowers. And he's talking to Bambi about romance. And I noticed that Disney do does this, you know, another time in a different film. Uh, what film was it? It's The Sword in the Stone. Where he had the main character, Wart, being taught by uh, Mer Merlin and... Archimedes and they were teaching them about like romance and so to speak and they were uh as squirrels and they were in the trees and running around land and bumped into you know female counterparts and stuff like that and um but they were t he was talking about romance and saying that you guys are going to get older you're going to start gaining an interest in women you know women going to start gaining interest in you and all you know three of them were just like no not us no <laughs> We're getting, we focused on getting money. We're not worried about the girls, which I don't know why they did all that. Cause shortly after that Thumper immediately bumps into a girl. Immediately he's completely smitten. Flowers bumps into a girl, which confused me even more because Flowers, when he got older, sound like even like, sound like a man who's been driving taxi cabs his entire life. It was confusing me. It sounded like a girl. And when he was younger, he was all smitten by what Bambi had called him, called him flowers and the eyelashes. Everything about him just said, okay, this is a female. And it, it threw me off, bro. I don't know what, what that was about. Disney. I don't know what y'all got going on with that. But that was weird. The fact that there's even question about that, the fact that you made this character design and you said, yeah, we're going we gonna, we gonna to call them flowers. I mean, we're going to, you know, we're going to give them eyelashes, longer ones to, you know, really showcase. Because even if you look at, let me pull this up. You look at Thumper, how he looks. 
and then you look at his girlfriend and see those long lashes this is like what was what was your thoughts on the character design you know it was just weird that was strange to me but they both had got them they both got booed up and of course bambi he he met feline is it feline he met feline of course he's completely smitten by her all of these boys talking all that noise instantly ran into some some little honeys and was done for but the story progressed uh feline and bambi become great friends he gets older and everything like that and just out of nowhere for no reason at all some guy named rono or rono comes out of the bushes you know bambi and feline walking down the street and this dude was just like he come out of the bushes just challenged him out of nowhere then bambi kind of stepped back like yo who is this dude so you see rono kind of like nudging feline off and off to the side somewhere i don't know if and that's what was catching my attention i'm like are they were they a couple did was <laughs> did bambi still his chick is mr still your girl stole his chick these two get into a battle dudes get into a battle they get into a duel they they going at it they bumping heads literally of course bambi defeats him throw him off the side of a clip he falls into a puddle of mud he looking embarrassed and you know uh feline and bambi you know they stay together then the story progresses and they go from this to just catastrophe you know what i mean everything just hit the fan so i'm guessing the hunters came back to the forest you start seeing birds and everything flying in that direction and you can kind of, and i guess the animals were able to sense danger all of them hid everybody here there was birds hit hiding squirrels rat all of that everybody's hiding because they got the sense that these hunters are here which was which was weird because i don't know man it seemed like they had like the hunt i don't know i'm gonna get into that in a second but dogs show up and these dogs are demonic i don't know what kind of dogs these were man but these were the most demonic looking dogs look at them what is wrong with y'all what did y'all eat why are y'all so angry because of other animals being around like y'all never been in a forest before relax dogs show up chasing bambi chasing uh feline uh bambi's dad tried to tell him like hey follow me of course bambi leaves him to go and find feline because you know they were she was somewhere else gotta make sure she's safe take her away um then the forest catches fire and i mean like it, everything was just happening so fast bro this forest caught fire so quickly look at this the forest caught fire and then the the way that it caught fire was extremely stupid it caught fire because of fire at the campgrounds that wherever the hunters were they end up leaving their camp their tents to go and run after these animals, which seems sporadically, them and their dogs, run into this forest to run after these animals and left their left the fire and the fire caught into the forest and caught quickly. This is the driest forest known to man. Caught fire so quickly. Which which is also this is nothing that's puzzling to me. Is the hunters they're obviously there they obviously have a presence you can hear the gunshot you see the results of their actions upon these animals and upon the environment but i never see them these dudes are never seen i i just that part i wasn't understanding why aren't these guys visible why weren't they ever shown in this film it was almost like they were more so an entity rather than an actual thing but i'm reaching you know it was just it was puzzling to me and it was confusing uh so the fire catches play catches place uh bambi and his dad are running through the forest trying to 
uh, avoid it. It's everywhere. The fire is some kind of way travels around them and gets in front of them because as they're running you know away from the fire they still end up catching it still end up catching up with them they still get cornered off and instead they still still get caught caught by it some kind of way and it's just that was extremely confusing to me uh but yeah his father to me was just trash in this movie man like he show up sporadically for only a few seconds as him and uh Bambi were running away. There's a part where Bambi jumps over a cliff, running away from the forest and the hunters and the dogs, and gets shot mid air, heading to the next cliff, and falls down. He's inside of this little cave looking thing, and his dad is in there with him. And his dad was just like, Get up, Bambi. You must get up. Get up. You have to get up because I said, get up. And it was just like, what, what is this scene? What is this dialogue, bro? It was so weird. Of course, Bambi got up because his father said so. What, it's like, is this symbolizing something? Like, your father, your father speaks and you just, I don't know. I'm reaching. It was just weird. They get past all of that. They get past the, the fire. They get past the hunters, the dogs, some kind of way. And it progresses on, and it's a new season. And Bambi has kids. Him and Feline got busy and has some, you know, a couple of Bambi Felines. I, I'm, I'm just like, huh? They they have kids. Everybody's there looking in amazement. All the animals are there. Y'all can barely see my face right now because look at all this bull crap on the screen that happened in this slow movie. They have kids. All the animals are there. And then Bambi is named the new prince of the forest. Yeah. The slowest movie in the United States of America. I was just like, that movie was probably like an hour and some change. Probably longer. I'm not even sure. I know. No, wait a second. It was, it was probably about an hour and 30 minutes. Because 38 minutes through the movie, I think the only thing that had happened was... 38 minutes into the movie, Bambi was on the ice sliding around with, the, with Thumper. 38 minutes. I'm pretty sure he was still on the ice trying to figure out walking. So, yeah. This movie was slow. Um, My thought is... With as slow as it was, the voice acting was great. But you can definitely tell it was definitely like in the 40s. Uh, most of the films that we've seen that's out of the ball was like 50 and 60s, 68, 63, 53, stuff like that. Most of those are in that, that particular time frame. And for some reason, dialogue was just quicker. Here, it was so slow. Everybody spoke so slowly. Hey, Bambi, what you got there? And it's just like, come on. I don't know, man. I don't, I don't know what the symbolism was supposed to be for this because I feel like it did symbolize something. Um, I know on the original novel, it was just basically just showing how cruel life can be, how harsh things can be, and how things may not, the story may not always pan out the way that you may want it to. Um, it was showing more so harsh, harsh reality and what is seeming like a really beautiful and peaceful place. Um... I know that weather was seemed to be like really important. Like season seemed to be really important in this film. Like they constantly showcased that and even sung about it in a lot of the uh, the ballads in the song in a movie. Um, but I don't know. I don't have any reaches for what it symbolizes. I just knew that it was it was painstakingly slow. Good movie. It was deemed as one of the greatest, you know, Disney animated films. And 
<sighs> it was it was okay to me. It was okay. Animation wise, it was beautiful. Very beautiful scenery. And Disney normally does that. Uh it was very beautiful. Like I said, the voice acting was great. The tone was set. It was they they learned how to set a tone. It was just slow. But that is my review. Uh that's all I got to say for this particular film. It was cool. 1942 Disney animated series. I mean, not series, but film. I enjoyed it. I'm looking forward to the next Out of the Vault film that me and my wife are going to check out. And um, I'll piece together a review for it and we'll be talking again. Until next time, guys. Peace.